if you get people to try it and do it, it's it's solves a lot of problems and it answers a lot of questions rather than theorizing how much a cart can hold or you know based on your kind of floor and your wheels and blah 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 yeah. let's just go try it thanks for being with us i'm super thrilled to hear more about uh about lean with you my name is robert simonis i'm the uh, principal consultant behind kce consulting that's uh, KCE for Kaizen and continuous improvement every day, everything, everybody. Implementing Water Sparter, it's a, it's a process. It's, a, it's an improvement, continuous improvement. So if you're trying to hit the num run and have a perfect routes, perfect routine, perfect schedule, this is not going to happen. I think it has to be put it in place and keep improving and talk to the water spider because if you have a water spider that is, is really exhausted at the end, there's probably something wrong about your route at the same time. So uh, right. it should be a steady pace. And again, similar to the right. operator inside that cell, it's a steady pace. Uh, and at the end of the day, they're probably less tired than the, the sprints they were running before. They run sprints and they rest and they run sprints and they yeah. rest. It's yeah. steady work. It's uh, paced work and it's, uh, again, it, it delivers what's needed, when's needed. Again, typically I'm holding like two hours uh, of material in the cell and I'm resupplying every hour. So I've got as much as an hour buffer. So if I'm a few minutes early or a few minutes late, um, or the worst case, I'm a few minutes early on one cycle, I'm six minutes early, 10%. And the next time I'm ten min uh, six minutes late, well, you know what? I've got enough material to cover that 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 total of 12 minutes of material. I got that so that the operator never has to wait, even though there's variation in the material delivery schedule. Um, but again, by controlling how much material I have in the cell helps me reduce the space I need. Right. And to control how much material I have in the cell, I've got to have a steady paced resupply. Um, but yes, there's still some buffer there for that variation between, you know, what happens if I find a few pieces that are scrap, I can't use them, or my delivery system is a little bit off, uh, and things like this. So there's still that buffer in there. Uh, you know, the very traditional three bin Kanban, you've got one bin you're working out of, one bin that's spare if I use this one, and there's one bin that's in the process of being refilled. So at any given time, there's one I'm working out of, there's one being refilled, and there's one that's somewhere in the middle. Either it's empty waiting to be taken or it's full weight, you know, back up for the one I'm using. When you go back to the, the factory, you try to implement the circular manufacturing. Do you, do you often see that they, they came back to a batch mode where you, they have the pallet? Is it, is it because people are not feeling comfortable at or they, they are afraid of missing material or raw material? It's... If, they, if they don't fix their material handling system, if they're in a batch mode delivering large quantities, we can design that cell to be nice and small and minimize the number of steps. But if the material handling system isn't delivering to meet that, you end up with more downtime, downtime as they wait for parts. Mm -hmm. So it, it almost goes hand in hand where I've got to fix the material handling system at the same time we're fixing the cell. Um, and again, initially it's, it's pretty common if they're using fork trucks to start with, maybe now they've got a pallet and they have a mix of materials on their pallet as they're driving around. And then the next step is to get rid of the fork truck and be using some kind of uh, a wagon or cart or dolly um, to, that, that better handles many different kinds of material uh, at the same time. The fork truck's really built for delivering one large container, which again, sometimes that is the quantity we're delivering. Mm -hmm. But uh, for a lot of these things, I really need some small batches that I'm, again, I'm gonna feed down that, that slider rack or I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace that plastic tote. So again, many times they'll, they'll start off with the fork truck with a pallet with a mixed load and then transition to a cart later on. Okay, but, but then, the material handling system has to 
go in line with the change to the cell. So what do you do first? Would you suggest to try to fix your or improve your material handling system first with the actual line and then switch to switch the line or? I usually do them both at the same time, but uh, now you've got me thinking that, that I could, um, I could start the material handling system first. I could deliver, even though I'm delivering batches of material, I could yeah. still establish routes and patterns. Um, I could start that journey first if I wanted to. Yep. Do you often often do a mock-up line or like a prototype that will be your showcase first or? It depends on the technology and what we have there. Um, I typically go through three levels. So I start off with, um, you know, I, we start off with like a, a layout, a factory layout, and we take scissors and we cut the layout and we, and we move things around to see. It's what I call paper doll, right? It's just a, we just physically manipulate the, the drawing without doing it in AutoCAD or whatever, yeah. just to see what's going to fit. Um, and then, and then the next step is to do it kind of like a two dimensional model. So we use some, some tables or chairs or flipped over boxes, whatever, to make kind of like the face, how the operator would see it. Um, and then we go to a full 3d model where it's, it's both height and depth. So we can practice the material handler and where he's going to deliver material. So we can, to the operator, the 2D model and the 3D model is the same because it's, he's just looking at the machine faces. Mm -hmm. But for maintenance and material handling, uh, uh, they've got a new reality because of where things are on the machines and where their delivery points are, pickup points are. What would be their fears if we, just the material handler, how do you sell to them? And what, what, why would they think it's not going to work? Uh, well, management thinks that I'm proposing something that's going to require a lot more labor. They think, okay, if I use my example from earlier, I got 14 guys now, and uh, now you want them to be there like Johnny on the spot, always bringing stuff whenever it's needed, before it's needed. I'm gonna need twice as many guys. No, no, you don't. <laughs> but that's that's a common fear is they they see it as being a lot more work than their current system. Um, you know, it, it, if today they're bringing out a pallet of material every 30 minutes and I say, well, no, you're going to bring 30 different materials out here at a time. And they're thinking, I'm going to need 30 more guys. You know, I'm gonna, I, you just. Again, seeing is believing. Um, taking a taking a cart or or taking a fork truck with a pallet and and putting some lines on it or something to mock up what a cart would look like and just try it again many times i've had people tell me oh no the cart will be too heavy mm -hmm. okay let's try it okay we put 400 kilograms we put 800 pounds on this thing and guess what it rolls just fine now i didn't i didn't know that beforehand but but um maybe it works maybe it doesn't maybe you go okay we got we got uh, pneumatic tires and we, we're going to need, you know, polyurethane tires, uh, wheels or, or uh, whatever. There's a saying that uh, I think it's Benjamin Franklin that I'm paraphrasing here. Something about if you tell me, I don't understand. If you show me, I I'm confused. But, but if you involve me, I'll understand. Right. And I'm hammering the quote, but but uh, uh, if you get people to try it and do it, it's it's solves a lot of problems and it answers a lot of questions rather than theorizing how much a cart can hold or you know based on your kind of floor and your wheels and blah blah blah. Yeah. Let's just go try it. So yeah. instead of instead of what I call brainstorming, we do what's called try storming, where we, brainstorming is just thinking up ideas. That's that's the first level. <laughs> Second is what's called tri storming. Okay, we thought of these things. I'll go try them. Because when you try them, you're going to learn a lot and you're going to come back with even better ideas. Mm -hmm. So tri storming uh, or go and try, go and do, right? Even if it's a mock up, even if it's a, just a couple cycles, you know, the people go to lunch and we run a few test parts, whatever the case is. 
Um, just like uh, parts are developed for, for most mature processes where we're going to make a prototype and we're going to run, we're going to test that thing to failure. And based on those failures, we're going to make a, a pilot part and we're, we're going to make a couple pilot parts and run them under different conditions. And then based on what we learned from the pilots, we're going to go to serial production. How can people reach you uh, if they want to learn more or if they want to... The, the best it? way is uh, to go to KCE consulting.com uh, or find me on LinkedIn. It's Robert Simonis, S-I-M-O-N-I-S. Looks like Simon is when it's spelled out. Okay. Or go to Industry Week and query my name and you'll find some articles I wrote and the same email and password is in there. So 